I'm Dr. Joseph Maroon. I'm a neurosurgeon at the University of Pittsburgh, and I've been the team neurosurgeon for the Pittsburgh Steelers for many years. I'm Rob Bernard, a primary healthcare provider for multiple operational units. The InfraScanner is a handheld, lightweight system that uses a disposable fiber optic shield for patient interface. It uses near infrared technology to detect intracranial bleeding. It provides a simple, positive negative report that helps to identify those patients who may need immediate referral for a CAT scan and or neurosurgical evaluation. The infant scanner can detect a hematoma in size of 3.5 cc's in volume at a distance of 3.5 centimeters from the scalp surface. The infant scanner does not replace the CT scan. It actually is a very efficient triage tool that leads to more efficient use of CT scans. The patient can easily present to me asymptomatic. There would have been no reason for me to move this patient to the front of the line. But if I'm getting a positive InfraScan, that patient is immediately moved to the priority. The InfraScanner is an optimal instrument to use in transit, be it an ambulance, an airplane, or wherever. And another advantage is the repeated measurements can be obtained over the course of hours or days. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that the system is fully charged or has fresh AA batteries. The system provides an hour and a half on the rechargeable batteries and up to two hours with the AA batteries. Well, the battery indicator light is actually located in the top right of the screen. If you see you get a low battery indicator, you have approximately one to five scans remaining. Another way is to navigate to the settings screen, which will give you the percentage of battery life remaining. In the event you're in a clinical or hospital environment and you do have a power source, you do have the option to use the rechargeable batteries within the InfraScanner. Once you plug in the device, it's going to blink. For 10 seconds, you may insert the InfraScanner into the cradle. The orange lamp will blink and you will know the InfraScanner is charging. If disposable batteries are in the InfraScanner, the red fault light will come on. Snap on the disposable fiber optic shield and then wait 15 seconds for the system to power on. One must take eight data points, starting on the patient's left, moving to the right for four separate data pairs so that there are symmetrical readings on both sides on all four points. The pressure must be firm but not painful and then it must be consistent and symmetrical on both sides. You have to have equal pressure on each side because that's what it's measuring. It's measuring the optic density, but it's extremely important to prevent an air code to have that equal pressure. When you press the button, you immediately release it, you'll hear an audible beep. If you're in a really loud environment and you're unable to hear that audible beep, the screen will actually go blank. When it's done with the read or the scan for that region, it will flash back on. So we're now going to do an InfraScanner examination and we begin by marking the left side of the head and when we do this we select a point in the mid pupillary line between the hair and the eyebrow to avoid the frontal sinuses which are about here and we place the fiber optic probe firmly but not too hard and click until we hear a signal and we see blue square shows where a measurement is to be taken. The black dot will appear after the first measurement on the left side. And now we're going to go to the opposite side and we're going to select a symmetrical point, again mid pupillary line between the hairline above the frontal sinuses firm but not hard pressure. We hear a beep and we now have a symmetrical infrared reading showing green and green on each side, meaning that there is no hematoma at that level. Next we select a point in front of the upper portion of the ear about at this level. We move the probe so as to separate the hair wait for the signal and confirming the correct location and the correct 
uh, reading, again, anterior to the ear, in the temporal fossa, working through the hair to get down to the skin, depress, and again, we see the symmetrical reading. Next, we're going to go to the left parietal area, and we select a point midway between the top of the ear and the coronal suture of the head, about in this area. And again, confirming a normal reading. The top of the ear, the coronal suture, the midline of the skull, midline, and we wiggle the device to get through the through the hair, depress. So we're going to complete the last measurement in the occipital area and we're going to select the line between the top of the ear and the back of the skull. Midway between that spot, we're going to again get through the hair, and then the same point between the top of the ear, the external area, or the external protuberance of the skull, midline, and we now have an absolutely normal scan bilaterally in all eight areas, four on each side. There are several things that we must be cognizant of in using this device. Number one, the hair can give a false positive if one does not make firm contact with the skin and scalp. Another is if there's blood on the scalp and one does not remove the blood or penetrate the blood layer. Another could be swelling of the underlying galea or skin or epidermis, which could give a false penetration. Another is a subgaleal hematoma or a blood clot, a goose bump, if you would, under the skin. If you go through this or penetrate that, you're going to clearly get a false positive so that one must palpate the skin and then move approximately a half a sonometer or so peripheral to that to make the measurement and then on the opposite side make the measurement at the same place on the skull. So these are a few areas that one must be aware of. If we have a direct abrasion or a laceration on the scalp, uh, it's really key that you do not go into the actual abrasion or laceration. If there's blood, mud, go ahead and wipe away the blood and go one centimeter to the left or right. But keep in mind, when you do the measurement on the opposite side, you must maintain symmetry. Since this is a fiber optic system that detects light, one must, if in bright light, actually shade to some degree the probes so that a false positive indicator uh, doesn't occur. If I get a positive scan, I'll return to the left side and repeat the measurement for two additional times to verify that I do indeed have a positive result. To protect patients from cross-contamination, we simply throw away the disposable fiber optic shield. So if the practitioner is dealing with a patient that is uncompliant or combative per se, you need to be able to stabilize the patient with your free hand. I've been able to use this in sports medicine, uh, in professional football players, as well as college uh, football players, in evaluating them for concussions, concurrently to do an infrascanner and satisfy myself that a CAT scan would not be indicated at that time, and clinical evaluation and further judgment uh, would be more appropriate. So that we've been able to use this again as a triage instrument for, to more effectively utilize cat scanning in athletes with concussions. When placing the infrascanner in the cradle to be recharged, simply insert the infrascanner vertically and then lean backwards, making sure to line up the spring-loaded cradle pins. To remove the infrascanner from the cradle, simply tilt the infrascanner forward and lift up vertically. The infrascanner will run for 90 minutes, taking approximately 15 scans when running on the rechargeable battery pack. It takes approximately six hours to fully recharge the battery. When AA batteries are used, the infrascanner will run for 120 minutes, taking approximately 20 scans. The near-infrared light comes through the diode laser here and reflects back to the silicon detector, 
located here. There are two measurement buttons located on the back of the InfraScanner. Either measurement button can be used. When taking a scan, remember to press and immediately release the measurement button. To power the InfraScanner on, you must install a fiber optic disposable shield. Simply fit the straight edge groove on the shield in the cutout ledge on the front of the scanner and snap the shield in on the back side. The fiber optic shield turns the InfraScanner on and removing the shield turns the InfraScanner off. If the shield is left on the InfraScanner and the scanner is not in use, it will start beeping after 8 minutes to alert the user that the InfraScanner is on and the batteries are being worn down. The top left right arrow keys navigate you through the InfraScanner screen menus. The center round green button is used to select or execute a task. The two up down bottom arrow keys are used to edit a task, for example when navigating back to a measurement point to rescan or when navigating through the scans to select the desired measurement number in the archive screen. When you power the InfraScanner on, the first screen you will see is the home screen. The battery indicator icon is in the top right. In the middle of the screen you will see a diagram to explain the keypad usage and in the bottom of the screen you will see measure, archive, and setting screen choices. By using the left right arrows to navigate to the settings screen and selecting it with the center round green button, three options will appear. Date and time, brightness, and battery. Again, use the left right arrow keys to scroll to the desired screen. The battery screen will give you the most accurate battery status. The brightness screen is essentially a military application allowing you to select night or day by using the up down arrow keys to select. The date and time screen gives you the year, month, and day along with the hour and minute. When AA batteries are being used and are taken out, the InfraScanner shuts down completely. If the batteries are not replaced right away, the user will have to adjust the time and possibly the date here. The technical button on the lower right is for technician use only. The archive screen is where the measurements are stored. By selecting view and using the up down arrow keys to select the scan to be reviewed, the scan measurement will be the number followed by the year, month, day, hour, minute, and second. When the measurement number is selected, the head diagram along with the relative optical density number at each measurement point can be reviewed. The measurement screen will show the top of the head. Notice the ears and nose helping you with the left-right pattern sequence. Again, the battery indicator is on the top right. Under the InfraScanner logo in the upper right is the measurement number. Look for coupled mode and OK waiting probe, telling you the InfraScanner is ready to scan. If you see communications error instead, simply take off the fiber optic shield and put it back on to restart the InfraScanner. If no message is showing here, contact the manufacturer for assistance. The locate selection in the bottom right of the screen is for use by those who are in the field or in a remote location. If a hematoma is detected, the locate screen will enable the user to take extra measurements to pinpoint the location of the hematoma and allow for emergency procedures. When taking a measurement of the patient, the blue square tells you where the next scan should be taken and the black dot indicates where the measurement is done. When both sides of one measurement location have been completed, a green circle for a negative or a red circle for a positive reading will show. The numbers below the F, T, P, and O on the head diagram show you the relative optical density difference between the left and right sides. Anything over 0 .20 will show a positive or red reading. The rings seen here in the red circle are added to help colorblind users read the measurements correctly. Anything .20 and below will show a negative or green reading. This number was based on a pilot study of TBI patients and healthy volunteers. This threshold was determined to maximize sensitivity and specificity. The near-infrared signal decreases over approximately 72 hours because of the natural breakdown of hemoglobin into methemoglobin. Therefore, the InfraScanner will not detect a chronic hematoma. Let's go over the measurement points one more time. The frontal measurement is above the pupil, just under the hairline with the center probe lining up with the pupil. The temporal measurement is in the temporal fossa 
in the front of the top of the ear. The parietal measurement is above the ear, midline between the ear, and midline of the skull. And the occipital measurement is on the back of the head, midway between the top of the ear and occipital protuberance, two to three centimeters above the top of the ear. Now we'll review the operating procedure. First, make sure your system is charged. If you are getting multiple air codes, put a fresh set of AA batteries in or recharge your system. Install a fiber optic shield and wait approximately 15 seconds for the InfraScanner to power on. Press the center round green button to select measure. Take note of the scan number for the patient's chart and then press the center round green button again to select next. The head diagram appears and you are ready to scan. Starting at the left frontal, push one of the two measurement buttons and immediately release. Be cautious here not to let up on one side, leaving only one probe on your patient's head after releasing the measurement button. You will hear a beep and the screen will go dark. When you hear a second beep or see the screen flash back on, the scan is complete. If you are in an area where you cannot hear the beep and you cannot see the screen flash, simply count to 10 for the first measurement and count to six for the second measurement. A double beep or an elongated beep at the end of the scan indicates an error. If you hear this, check the screen and follow the error code. Press the center round green button to rescan. Now we will review the error codes. High signal, too much ambient light, shield the light guide with the hand and repeat measurement. Low signal, hair may be trapped under the fiber optic tips. Comb or wiggle the tips to get better contact with the scalp and rescan. Repeat measurement. Light on one side of the head may be brighter than the other. Shield the top of the InfraScanner and repeat measurement. Saturated start in reverse order. The InfraScanner is potentially detecting a hematoma and this is the only time you will start on the right side. Follow the directions and rescan. Time out. The InfraScanner needs more time to analyze. Move a couple of millimeters over and rescan. Be sure to use symmetrical placement on both sides. Unstable signal. Variations were detected indicating an unsteady reading. Be cautious to use equal pressure so that both prongs are placed on the head and hold your hands steady. Low battery. Time to replace the AA batteries or recharge the battery pack. Some of the most common mistakes that can cause an error code are low batteries, non-uniform pressure, non-symmetrical location for readings, hair under the fiber optic tips, too much overhead light, or hair gel and hair weaves. Remember if you get a positive or red reading, rescan up to two additional times to verify. You're now ready for your hands-on training.